you know, please raise your hand. Nobody has got it. So I think we have to check into it. Because, uh, as I said, that they had printed 60 copies and then 65 people enrolled. So they told me that they will distribute 60 copies yesterday and five today. So it looks like that nobody has received it. I think you should have it because that would have helped for you to go over the slides, you know, which, which I indicated as a homework actually in the sense that you could have reviewed it and then you could have, you know, asked some questions. So I really don't know. I will have to check, you know, that why it was not distributed yesterday. And uh, I think, you know, after the break, you know, maybe around 5.30 or so, then we'll have a coffee break. At that time, I will check, you know, Dr. Jain had to go to some other meeting. And also Dr. Paul had to go to the same meeting. So they are not here. But I will try to definitely check because I think it is important that you have, you know, the notes available to you. So let me take just a few minutes. Uh, uh, let me ask you, you, do you have any questions uh, based on what we discussed yesterday? And also, you know, uh, if you have any uh, kind of suggestions or inputs, uh, because we have still, you know, four more days to go. And on Sunday, I think in the morning, we will have a small quiz, which is a requirement for the course, uh, which will be very straightforward. But right now, the most important thing is to cover the material uh, in next today and next three more days. And uh, I told you the plan about what the material we covered. And majority of the material that I will cover, you know, after say, today onwards, will be the one research oriented material uh, basically in the area of cavitation, the bubble dynamics uh, in, and uh, sequestration and combustion. Uh, where that is where the particle and gas interactions come into play. So just let me take uh, just a few minutes uh, it, and I think it will be very useful for me to know uh, and although it will take a few minutes, I think it is worthwhile spending that time. So if we start, you know, from here onwards and then go around, you can just, just introduce yourself, that your name and where are you coming from. And if you want to mention, you know, are you a student or you are a professor and what is your, what exactly you are looking from this course, okay. So that will help me in deciding, you know, that we have a lot of material actually that we have to focus and you know what will be most beneficial for most of the people here. Okay. So we can start from this side. Are you a, a professor there? A student of so what is your interest? Just one line, you know, very small. Okay, it's all right. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understood, you know, so keep it short, you know, we have a lot of people. Yeah, understand. Okay, so this is a good thing because there is one lecture, a short one, which I would try to maybe finish it today, which exactly will do what you did. So, which means that a nanofluidic with can be treated as a single phase flow. So, that is the simplest way to deal with the single phase flow. Okay. So I think that is a good information that is I am looking for, okay. And then why are we using it as a single phase flow and so on, we will go into that, okay. All right.
they are looking more and more the uh, in a pro or particulates. Yeah, 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 yeah. In dispersion of particles. Okay. Yeah. And what is your interest in this? So you are basically interested in basic CFD. Because wind turbine, you know, really uh, it can become multi-phase, uh, but uh, normally people don't deal with it. You know, when it when it becomes multi-phase, when you have a dust storm, the dust there's always some dust in the wind, but that is again so small. It's just like a nanofluidic type. I'm saying very small percentage that I was talking yesterday. So you don't have to worry about it in terms of the performance of the wind turbine, but if it is a wind turbine in a place like Saudi Arabia, that is where the dust storms are every day containing sand, then the analysis requires you know, a multi-phase flow, but without any reaction. Sand is basically uh, has no reaction with the air. Okay, sir. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we'll, uh, you know, tomorrow, as I said, is going to be the core of the uh, or heart of the uh, course because it will deal with basically the numerical construct, you know, numerical way in which we will deal, deal with the volume of fluid method and a little bit about levels. So that will not be enough to really solve your problem, but if you want to discuss later, I have a lot of information on that. So let me also mention that anybody who wants to meet with me on one to one, you can send me an email, all right. So my email it is there. So like today I got an email from a person and I responded to him that we can meet, you know, maybe just before lunch or maybe, you know. Uh, sometime we can meet during the day before the course starts and we can spend 10 15 minutes because you know in the break you know there is not enough time to sit down so that opportunity is available to you if you would like to take it okay sir What project you are going to work? Okay. So again, you know, most of the problem aerodynamics are, you know, not multi-phase, but some of them are. Okay. 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 All right. Sir. Okay, sir. Okay.
ओके 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 You are from MNIT. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Next. ओके 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 नेक्स्ट ओके 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 नेक्स्ट ओके नेक्स्ट ओके 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 हम्म 
Okay. And yeah, go ahead. Okay. And I think you three left. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Please. Okay. Next. Is anybody else on the back? Okay. All right. And okay. Anybody else in the back? Yes, sir. Working in the area of? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Anybody else in the back? Okay. We have three people here. Please. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I think that you know this spending it is five ten minutes is very useful for me and also I think useful for all of you also if you were able to hear you know what everybody is saying. So I think that uh, there are two things are clear that we have uh, you know people coming from all over the country. There are people from Bengal and from north, from Himachal and Delhi and all the way to from Vellore and Bombay area. So, the entire country is covered in a way, that is a good thing. Also, you know, there are people who are engineers and there are people who are also mathematicians. Some of them are physicists. And they, everybody has a different motivation. But one thing is clear by hearing from you that most of you, <coughs> I would say majority of you are interested in learning about CFD and using the tools of CFD or you can say the software of CFD to solve some problem. And majority of you it appears to me have applications which are not multiphase. Only I would say 8 or 10 out of 65 whom I have heard that they are interested in multiphase. Some of them are working in nuclear industry or coming from a Naba Research Center and some of them are interested because they are teaching this kind of material. A lot of them are interested, you know, even in the basic differential equations, physics aspects, geomechanics and also applications from wind energy to turbines and so on. Now I want to emphasize, you know, the CFD itself is a vast subject and now it is offered you know may almost every institution you know because it has become so common some of them even have mentioned about application in biomechanics or biofluidynamics so this is not a course in cfd all right so what i mean is that to address that how will you apply the CFD to solve a problem in wind turbine. And there was a person also mentioned that from aeronautical engineering, interested in some aerodynamics problem. So that application or that kind of a course, I have given, you know, many other times, not here, but other places. And that is how I started my career in basic CFD, working for aerospace industry. This is not a course in that single phase flow basic CFD because that is much simpler problem from both physics point of view and also from the point of view of usage of the software and also the numerics that goes into it is a relatively simpler problem. 
So, simpler does not mean that you know you can do it easily, but what it means is that when you are looking at a problem say in design of wind turbine, then the focus is on a single phase flow of air and then you have a rotating machinery and what you are interested there is to calculate the lift and drag and to calculate how much power is generated. You are looking at the aeronautical application aerodynamics, again it is a single phase flow of air, but they have some other aspects to it and that technology is quite well developed actually come in contrast to the multi-phase flow. And as you saw yesterday in the introductory lecture, the multi-phase flow is, is still a very complex area because you are not talking about a single phase, but you are talking a multi-phase. So all the people, it turns out, for reason that I do not know, who are interested in multi-phase are in sitting in the front, all right, all the, the five people. And there are of course in the back also, but majority of the people uh, not more than 10 are interested in the true multiphase, which means the volume of fluid method, which is required only in multiphase flow, which we are going to discuss in great detail tomorrow because that is where we will talk about the basic numerical method. And similarly, the level set method somebody mentioned, it is also required, I mean it has other applications also, but it is essentially needed for multi-phase. So, multi-phase as we spent the whole one and a half to two hours, maybe two and a half hours yesterday going through the introductory material that how complex it is, even for a simple pipe flow and what are the issues involved. So, even today in the industrial design as I was mentioning to you that there are handbooks and those handbooks are used and the correlations are used in solving the flow, flow for practical problems even in a single pipe like you know oil industry uses it and of course nuclear industry there are issues there. And of course somebody in the back mentioned and I think you know, people in the front are also interested is in a boiling heat transfer and the problem of evaporation and that becomes a little more complex in the sense that as I was mentioning to you that when you have this mixing of two phases, then in that process of mixing because of the addition of the heat, you have evaporation can take place for example. The water can evaporate into steam or a gas and that is a simplest example, but of course there are more complex examples. The process of methanation, I do not know how many of you heard of methanation. So, for example, the generation of methane gas, that is an important problem and that is a very complex multi-phase problem which in involves heat transfer also. But the basic technology that we are going to talk about and the applications, they will uh, give you some perspective, you know, in a matter of few days. I mean, you know, you can spend the whole semester worth of course to go over it, but you will have enough information. So, number one, you know, I want to mention is that some of you mentioned that because you have a very different expectation from the course. So, this is a good thing for me to know what is your expectation, all right. And so, I want to tell you after hearing to you is that majority of the focus, I would say 99 percent of the focus of the course is on multi -phase which means that those technologies which are only applicable to multi-phase, which means that level set method, volume of fluid method, how do you, you know, uh, use the bubble for example, the droplet which occur in a multi-phase whether and of course it can become more complicated if you have evaporation of those bubbles or you have reactions taking place and again with among the two phases and that can change mass of the phases also. So, when the reaction is taking place between two different phases and during the process of reaction, the mass transfer can take place. So, those complications are there, but you will get a little bit of I would say view of it, you know, from a distance that what it involves, okay. So, let me tell you up front that what can be there, like you know, 
the only thing you can see is that you are looking at a mountain and you can see that there is some trees there and some greenery there or there is some snow there. That is the kind of perspective that you will get from this course. But you will have the material and as I said, that if you want more information, more material and also you want to discuss your specific problem, just send me an email. I will make sure that in the next three, four days that we can get together for 10, 15, 20 minutes to address your particular problem. So like some guy from IIT Delhi is trying to work on it, evaporation problem or and that is kind of multi-phase in some sense and I can you know talk to him and discuss it. But those who are working in pure CFD which is a simpler problem today, I would say is much simpler than the focus of this course, uh, they are they can learn about you know some aspects about you know what is involved at a different level but they will not get you know, I would say that they are a simpler subset of what I am going to talk about. Because the equations that are there and the technology is very well developed. So, what I want to do is to now start what where we left off yesterday, again with a focus on multi phase, which means that you have two phases or three phases. Okay. Most of the examples we will consider to keep it simple is two phases. So, liquid liquid phase of immiscible liquids like oil and water, or say the gas and liquid. So, we talked about it, I showed you a lot of applications, and I also, in particularly for pipe flow, I mentioned that the issue of various patterns which are a function of the geometry of the size of the pipe. So, like somebody is interested in micro channel which means that the size is of the order of micrometers and so the whole pattern of the flow changes all right so all those issues are sub subset and we cannot cover everything now there is only one person i think in the audience that is interested in cavitation so there is a lot of material on cavitation and i want to spend some time there so, I in order not to waste more time on this and I want to proceed further quickly that we will start again with a focus on multiphase flow. A number of people are interested in nanofluids and I will have a presentation on nanofluids. Nanofluids in the context of multiphase flow is a simple problem, all right. So, that is why after we go through this initial introduction some more information and particularly with respect to the pipe flow which is very important and all the correlations and the empirical relations are available which as a practical engineer you can use, we will go over that fast and why nanofluid is a simpler problem, okay, couple of them are working in nanofluid because it can be treated as a single phase flow. So, anything that can be treated as a single phase flow becomes a simpler problem, okay. Why can, can you, uh, if you remember from yesterday and we were time going to ask you some questions or maybe you ask me some questions that why a nano fluid is a single phase flow, can be treated as a single phase flow. Can you answer the person who is working in nano fluid? No, no, I understand. I and I think what you are saying is perfectly great. What I am trying to see is that why nano fluid can be treated as a single phase fluid. Of course, you are telling sub sub subset because the particle is a small, etc. But the key thing there and the particle is mono dispersed, di dispersed, this is all these things are there. It is in a it is in a Brownian motion. I am not looking for that. I am looking for the simplest answer. Volume fraction. So, the volume fraction is of the order of 2 to 4 percent. And so, which means that as I told you yesterday, what is the volume fraction you require? For example, if you want to go to more complex situation, then a single you can have a two fluid model, but you can have a single fluid model. So, if the volume fraction is 2 to 4 percent, it means you can treat it as a single phase. So, that is why we will start from there and show you a very simple example and then we will move on and add, add to it with more phases. So, what happens is a nanofluid who are working in nanofluids, 
it is a single phase problem in modeling and it gives you a good result and why we use nano fluids will I mentioned to you when I do that presentation today I want to finish up to that point so that tomorrow onwards we can focus on the most complex part of the numerics which pertains which is important for the multiphase right and that will not be relevant let me tell you except a part of it for the people who are interested in single phase single phase i am assuming that cfd is simple enough that you know you can handle it with the current uh, manuals etc and you can use open foam which some people in this audience are using and or you can use ansys cfx or whatever software you may have so think so single phase when we come to it what changes if you put some nano fluid in it i mean nano particles in it what changes is only you can change the density you can change the viscosity you can change the thermal conductivity etc and that's all so you can just write a small udf and put it in and you have the answer and the answer is quite good actually as you will see so i think that that is how we'll proceed and but we'll have a much you know greater emphasis both on the numerical side as well as on the application side from tomorrow onwards okay so right now i want to do is that i want to go over some again some definition which are very particular to multiphase which are not the definitions that you will inquire, encounter in single phase okay all of you are working in single phase basically deal with air and water okay some of you maybe one person is dealing with maybe blood flow or some other thing but that is a non newtonian fluid but it behaves like a newtonian fluid most of the time okay so i think that in the context of multiphase also we will mostly focus primarily on air and water uh -huh. yes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now let me now let me again emphasize that it is important to keep the scope as i was emphasizing yesterday also so that you can get something out of this course the goal here is not to solve a phd problem all right the goal is not here to cover all these complex models the goal is not here to cover the uh, finite element model we will just focus on the finite volume which is there a part of ansys we will focus on primarily as if we are dealing with ansys what is available in the ansys right now it is a black box i will try to show you something out of that black box as there is something inside that black box all right you don't know in that the black box it is a piece of dirt or it is a piece of silver or gold so i will try to show you that there is something in that black box that you should know a little bit that's all but the scope is not that everything but if you want to discuss that you know we can meet on one to one basis because i know that lot of you want to understand cfd and i have given course in cfd one of the best courses i have given <coughs> here not at mit but other place i gave a course many years ago at svnit and that is where dr jain actually took that course 10 years ago and that's where i met him so point i'm saying is that for the necessity that we have we have to focus on what we can do and still you can get something good out of it okay so we will go in a baby steps you know one by one and see whether we can climb some height all right so now uh, we are going to focus on multiphase and i do want to tell everybody who are only purely interested in cfd at the end of the course you will still get lot more information that will be useful to you whether you are doing single phase cfd or or you are doing multiphase 
all right that is the goal all right sir okay. so now the next step from tomorrow yesterday onwards you know i showed you some interesting applications i showed you that what is the state of the art and also i told showed you that what are the kind of numerical methods that we will be discussing all right that again uh, please stop me we can discuss it and if i think that the discussion will lead to a, a answer that is not easy for me to give in a short time then the answer will be the kind of that i given to you and then you are always welcome to you know talk to me on a personal basis or otherwise you know if there is not time you can communicate me by email and i am more than willing to give you the answer all right but don't be shy about not asking the question so i certainly appreciate your question so don't think that if i am not be able to answer the way you wanted it because if i answer your question then rest of the 40 64 people will be out of it which is not fair to them all right so let us come back to the a few definitions you will find there is a lot of information on these slides the 30 slides or so but we will just highlight what it is and rest of it you can read and i will make sure that you get those copies today why is not moving this this is not flipping this okay all right okay so there are some basic uh, terminology and is is very simple i mean you can read it and of course you can also uh, uh read it at your leisure at home but i will just highlight you know what we are need to uh, learn so the total mass that i am showing you here the subscript l means is a liquid and the other one is gas so we will be basically focusing on two phases and as i said yesterday that there is only one problem of importance which has three phases which we will discuss maybe towards the end of this course and so this is mass and this is the volume flow rate which means that you know that volume times the density is the mass and so what you have here is that the volume flow rate is mass divided by the density and subscript g and l denote the gas and the liquid so now the other quantity that you will see later on and these are important quantities because as i said a lot of information that is given in the literature and also in the handbooks and other books they use this kind of a symbol so what you have is called the uh, flux of the quantity and that is denoted by g which is mass divided by the area of cross section now there are couple of things that in the context of multi phase flow that you will come encounter and what is one is called the mass quality so the mass quality in a multi phase flow of gas and liquid in a pipe that is defined here by the symbol x and that means that the gaseous phase the mass of the gas divided by the total mass that is called the mass quality and the other one is called the volume quality denoted here by beta and that is the volume of the gas divided by the total volume of both the phases so this terminology some of you i know who are sitting in the front they are very much familiar with it but those who are sitting in the back may not be familiar with it so i think that we have to just go over it very quickly so that these are the kind of things when you read a book like i showed you the book by christopher brennan yesterday and you will find that these numbers are there so so, so if you have never heard of mass quality you will say what it is so if you are a single phase person you will never have heard of this this name so it's important for me to go over this terminology but those of you who have are familiar with it you know please bear with me and you know for the sake of your other colleagues okay 
So now the other thing, and of course you can by, by simple manipulation, simple algebra, which is a high school algebra, you can show that the volume quality is related to the mass quality. Okay. So this is simple manipulation of the two expressions that I showed you. So yesterday you might have remembered that one other definition that I gave you, which is an important definition, is called the void fraction. And void fraction is often used, and this will come up again yesterday when we talk about the multiphase flow. And that is simply given by the area occupied by the gas divided by the total area of cross section of the pipe. So, this is basically the liquid area plus the gas area, which is the total area. And so, you will come across this particular terminology called vo void fraction. So, mass quality, volume quality, void fraction. And this is a more even, even a more important one because when we talk about the fluidization that I said later on in the context of chemi chemical looping, etc., then you will see this quantity being talked about a great deal, which is called the superficial velocity of the liquid phase. And that is given by the volume flow of the liquid divided by the total area. So, this is a superficial velocity which is often used in the context of the multiphase. And so, all this terminology is important. And as I said, that if you have never worked in multiphase and you are even reading a book, you will find that this terminology is useful. So, this is in one single place. Then you have the superficial velocity of the gas phase, which is given by the subscript G means gas. And this again the total volume of the gas divided by the total area. And then there is other one which is important and these numbers are these things, these, uh, these uh, descriptions or definitions, they are universal in the sense that every book uses that. Okay. So, any book on multiphase or any paper on multiphase use the same terminology. So, what you have a mixture, it is not the mean velocity, it is the mixture velocity of the flow which is um. So, m denotes the mixture which means the total flow rate divided by the total area. Okay. And this mixture velocity is a sum of the superficial velocity of the liquid plus the superficial velocity of the gas. So, these pages although they do not have any complexity, but they are very important in terms of knowing about what are the basic, basic definitions that any Buddy who is working in the uh, multi phase flow should know. And then, of course, you know what is a void fraction. It is difficult to remember, you know, because unless until you have been looking at it for a long time, because it was on a previous chart. So, I am telling you know, you people that if you do not remember, it is okay. That is why if you had that uh, notes in your hand, I think it would have been easier to go back and forth. But void fraction, you know, if you remember, is basically the area of the gas divided by the total area. All right, so that is a void fraction. Yeah, that's that's the same. Yes. Yes, that's correct. That is correct. We are just focusing on liquid and gas, but if you have a much more complex situation where you have generation of bubbles and all those things, then your definition is correct. So, that becomes a generalized definition. So, what we are trying to do here is to people who have never known about the definitions of the multiphase, and that is the case for 55 people in this room, this is enough to go with it. And you can always generalize it what you are doing. And so now this is as I said, the, now this thing I want to emphasize because I have seen lot of students and lot of people and as I said, you know, you, can, you will have to go back and forth and read it uh, and it is not easy to remember. So, just keep with you that what I showed you the mixture velocity and the average velocity are two different things. Okay. Now, in case of a single phase, you do not have a mixture. So, you do not have all these definitions like superficial velocity, average velocity, mean velocity, they are all different and people can get confused. So, that is why these simple definitions are important. And all those relations that I have given you, 
it is a very simple algebra, nothing more than that. So, the mean velocity UL is the volume flow rate UL divided by AL and using the void fraction definition you can have manipulate it, all right. So, there it becomes, if you anybody remembers that previous slide what this was, superficial velocity. So, now mean velocity is a function of the superficial velocity divided by the void fraction, okay. These are very simple relations, but they are important. And also, you know, when you do the calculations or particularly when we are going to talk later about fluidization and all that, they become important. And similarly, the average gas velocity is defined the same way, all right. Yes, sir. Say it again. This is normally the total, that is what he was saying about the dispersed space. So, if you have a gas bubble, now of course, you know, you can have a, for example, a slug flow, all right. Or you, so slug flow, we know that there is a huge bubble, all right. And then of course, you can have a packed bed, all right, which has a lot of bubbles. And then you can have a dispersed bubbles. So, in that case, what normally done is that the entire area that the bubbles are, okay, whether it is a slug type bubble or it is a pack type bubble or it is a general dispersed bubbles, it is all you can consider is the entire area of that particular phase, which is a dispersed phase that you consider, okay. You do not go in further micromanaging the definition. Okay. Now, I said that the entire dispersed phase, whether it has two bubbles or it has thousand bubbles of little, little size, you take the entire that area to determine the void fraction. No, no, but you are talking about now a different thing. We are talking about gaseous phase and the liquid phase. So, the void fraction in that particular case when the liquid is 0 and is full of nothing but bubbles, okay, then you do not have a void fraction definition that what I am giving you. Is, is clear? Okay. What you are asking is that you have a flow in a pipe, all right. It does not have any liquid at all. Yeah, so, the area that is uh, occupied by the bubbles, that is you have to consider, yeah. No, you do not go on to that level. You have a area in which the bubbles are floating, you consider the entire area. So, as I am telling you that you may have only one bubble in the entire area, if it is a slug flow, right. How many bubbles you will have in a slug flow? Are too many, that is by definition. So, then the entire area in which you have that big bubble is the one that you will use in the void fraction, and the rest of it is liquid, all right. And we are not considering all those other complications, you know, that some liquid has evaporated and it has become like bubbles and all that, then you are going to be stuck with the definition of the void fraction for the rest of your life. Okay. What is the goal here is, or what is the whole goal of these definitions is, as you will see, that by these definitions, you can characterize the type of flows that we see, which are a function of the geometry, function of the velocity of the two phases. You understand what I am saying? Yesterday, I showed you six different type of flows, small bubbles, dispersed, then there were packed bubbles and then there were, you know, slug flow and then there was a wispy churn flow, etcetera, etcetera. The idea here is that how you can characterize in a simplest way these particular kind of flows that you can observe and get some meaningful correlations from which you can do some design. 
Now, what is the? Uh, uh, what, uh, give me the example that I yesterday gave you of a design that you are interested in. One of the most important problem that I mentioned to you, without going into too many problems, was flow in a oil pipeline. Right. So you have to suppose figure out that how do you have a flow with a certain velocity of the oil that is being pumped for 2,000 miles in a diameter of 20 meters pipe, the amount of power that is required against the fluid friction, which is a rough pipe, what is the type of flow that should take place which will require the least amount of power. So what you need is, you do not want to go at a level that you are trying to figure out what is happening. As I was giving an example that if you want to analyze the flow in this room, you are not interested in what is happening to the uh, to the uh, chairs. And if you are of the level of the person that you say, I am not only interested in chair, I am also interested that this little bottle is sitting here. Then of course you are at a liberty, but it is not the, as an engineer you are interested. So similarly in void fraction, we want to have a simplest definition of void fraction, which means that it should be applicable to the packed flow, packed bubbles, it should be applicable to a slug bubble, it should be applicable to other type of bubble. And which means that you have to isolate the liquid part and isolate the rest of the part. And this gentleman here asked a very good question and I gave him a simplest answer possible that what is a dispersed phase. So you can consider that a dispersed phase. Now that is how it is done because, but he was trying to go further. Yeah. Now, what is the goal here is, you know, as I said, to give you enough information so that you have an appreciation of what is going on. Okay. So, when I am going to cover uh, tomorrow the methods, even for a single bubble, how a single bubble moves, okay, that itself is a very complicated problem. Okay. So, at this point, we are just setting up the idea of the terminology which is important. Okay. Now, if you go to further refine the terminology, then you can go on further refining the terminology and we can have discussion for rest of the course. Okay. But I think that for the purpose of your answer, which was a very you know good question, I think that is sufficient. Is that okay? So now there is other definition where I think is important to remember in this context, and that is called the slip ratio. And the slip ratio is defined as the UG and UL. So, okay, and what was UGL? Uh, and then, of course, these relations are not that important. You can just manipulate from the previous algebra, okay, and so you will get all these in terms of the mass quality, in terms of the void fraction, etc. But what is to remember is that this is S is UG over UL. And anybody remembers from the previous slide? I am not expecting to remember what is UG. Average velocity. It is not the superficial velocity. So these are the things that you should just recall and don't worry about all these expressions. You know, these are just simple algebra. Okay. Now there are dimensionless numbers, and the people who came up with these dimensionless numbers, they are after their names. And this is not a complete list of dimensionless numbers, but I have listed those numbers which are relevant in the context of multiphase flow. And not all of them are important. So I am going to emphasize what are the important numbers. They are listed a larger number, but they are not all of them important. All right. 
So I think, but for your information, you have the information that you may keep it with you and as we move forward. So in a single phase flow, whether it's a wind turbine or it is a flow over a car or it is a flow over an aeroplane, what are the most important dimensionless number that you have come across using the Buckingham's pi theorem? So what is the, give me the most important. Hmm? Yeah, what is that number? Reynolds number. So Reynolds number is the most important number in the single multi, multi, multi phase aerodynamic uh, flow. Reynolds number is the most important because it says the ratio of the inertia divided by the viscous. Okay. The other way around becomes 1 over the Reynolds number by definition. Why it is so important? Because how many of you have heard of Navel Stokes equation? Everybody, because that is the heart of the problem. On the left hand side of the Navel Stokes equation, what do you have? Inertia. On the right hand side, what do you have? Viscous. So, it is actually the weight of the two set of a type of terms which are a part of the heart of fluid mechanics based on the Newton's law. If you write the take the Newton's second law and write it down in terms of the flow of a viscous moving fluid, it becomes a navel stokes equation. And that is the inertia terms on one side and the viscous terms. So Reynolds number is the most important one. Okay, the, another second one, only one more. What do you, do you, I mean you may like some number, you can say that. Hmm? No. I am talking single phase fluid mechanics. Only single phase fluid mechanics. You said Reynolds number, I agree with you. Actually the entire fluid mechanics, that is the most important one. What is the second one? Hmm? What is that number? No, 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 Stokes number is a subset of the Reynolds number. Stokes number is for a small uh, velocity flow. There are hundreds of numbers. Okay, somebody said proud number. Proud number is very important on the people who work in civil engineers. I think there are a few civil engineers, the hydraulics. Because the hydraulics, if you are working in canals and channels and so on, it is important. Euler number is okay. I mean, there are a lot of numbers. Prandtl number is important if you have a heat transfer. So the heat transfer Prandtl number is very important in the presence of the energy equation. So I agree with you that Reynolds number, a heat transfer, you have Prandtl number. Of course, there are a lot of other numbers in heat transfer, Nussel number and, and Grashof number and all that. But I am just asking the most important one. Because the rest of them you can always somehow or the other connect with the others. So the Prandtl number, the Reynolds number and one more, that Mach number. Why Mach number is important is that it basically determines how fast you are going. So if you are going, you know, like driving a car, then the Mach number is Mach number is the ratio of the your velocity divided by the speed of sound. The speed of sound is fixed almost. It's about 360 meters per second. So if you are walking at say 1 meter per second, I don't know what is the walking speed. I know that it's not more than about a couple of miles an hour, even if you are a fast walker. You can convert it and you can see that it will be a few meters per second maximum. So you can see that you are almost a incompressible fluid. So when you are using the ANSYS and you are trying to evaluate the flow of a wind turbine, your Mach number is so low because wind speed in most of India is of the order of 5 to 10 meters per second maximum. Even on the coast of Chennai, 
it is not more than 10 meters per second. Okay. So, India actually has a limited potential of wind energy. So, but if you are doing that particular kind of problem, then it means that you can, you must use the incompressible flow solver. Okay. If you are doing the problem of a car, which you derive at 80 kilometers per hour, then the Mach number, you can, you know, you can calculate it is of the order of 0.1. Point two. You can still use the incompressible flow solver. So, if you are using, say, the ANSYS, you can use simple algorithm. You can use the steady state solver if it is a steady state problem. And then you can use the pressure velocity coupling. You can use a piezo algorithm or whatever you like to make it a little better. You can use a second order up wind scheme. And do the geometry modeling and your problem of wind turbine is solved. Okay. So, I am trying to integrate a little bit for the people who are doing the single phase work. All right. So, these are the numbers that are important. What is a special thing that happens in a multi phase flow? Multi year density variation occurs in the uh, uh, flow over aeroplane. Okay. So, density variation when you go 50,000 feet, it is, you know, at 50,000 feet, you know, what is the change in the density? Anybody know, can guess? Like density, what is the density of air? Can anybody tell me? It's about 1 kg per meter cube. What is the density of water? 1000. So, do not remember points, you know, just 1 and 1000. Okay. What is the density of air at 30,000 feet? It is rare, rare rarefied. So, the density has to be less than 1. But how, how much less than 1? So, density actually does not change at 30,000 feet, it does not change that much. It does change, but it is like 0 0.8 or 0 0.75. But if you go to 100,000 feet, it suddenly becomes 0 0.1. And if you go 300,000 feet, it is almost become 0 0.0001 because the molecules are not there. Now, what is the temperature? What is temperature right now here? 20 degrees centigrade. What is the temperature at 30,000 feet? So, it is like minus 20 degrees centigrade. Okay, so, you have to know these numbers when you are applying fluent to solve a aerodynamics problem, to solve a wind turbine problem, which one to use. So, if you are going to solve the problem of aerodynamics, then you have to use the compressible flow solver. And in the compressible solver, you have two options in fluent. One is the pressure and the other one is the density base. So, which one are you going to use for aerodynamics? And what are you going to use for the uh, incompressible flow? Pressure phase is good enough. If you happen to use a pressure base for the aerodynamics also, it will be okay. If nothing is going to happen. You can still get a good answer. All right. My friend here is getting bored. He is thinking that I am talking about things which is not a focus of the course, right? But I am trying to integrate it so that other people can also benefit about the basic in basic things that are inside the fluent. Okay. So, you have a grid generator, then you have for a single phase flow, you have air or water that you use and then you basically use ICM to generate the grid and then you can do the solution. The only thing that is that you have a lot of options of turbulence models and you can choose you know the one that you like. You can use SSTK Omega, you can use SA model, or you can use K epsilon model, etc., etc. All right. So now coming back to this, these basic definitions are very important. So what is happening is that I am trying to integrate, you know, whatever I can. So now let me ask you this: What is special about the multi-phase flow? 
if you remember from yesterday. One of them is the interface. And what happens, what is the special force that occurs at the interface? Surface tension. So that modeling of the surface tension, so one thing happens in, uh, in, 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 the, in the modeling point of view of the interface is that you have surface tension. But the other aspect of the interface is the interface is moving and interface is changing. So when you have a bubble, a single bubble right now like this and it moves, what does happen? It deforms. So instead of being a circular bubble, it may take some shape, we do not know. All right. When the bubble hits the wall, it bursts. It has a different shape. And those of you who are interested in fluidization, what happens to the bubble? The bubble moves and again deforms and has collisions among themselves. Okay, those who are from the nuclear industry, you know what happens to the bubble. Some of you are interested. It can boil, boiling can take place and it can go through evaporation and other effects can happen. So the bubble has a properties that are unique to multiphase flow. Okay, so when we are going to, this will be whole lecture with about 70 slides devoted to the various type of bubble. So bubble has a special thing is that bubble has a interface issue and the other issue with the bubble is that interface experiences the forces in addition to the pressure, in addition to the gravity, in addition to the viscosity, the surface tension. And how do you take the surface tension and put it together in a multi-phase solver that is going to be the focus of tomorrow. So tomorrow is going to be one of the most important talk. And so the deformation of the interface, not only accounting for the surface tension, is what is called the volume of fluid method. You can use also what is called the front trunking method or <coughs> you can use also what is called the level set method. Level set method is only about 15 to 20 years old. The uh, volume of fluid method is about 40 years old. Yeah. Yeah, so the sloshing is a little more difficult problem, but in sloshing again you have more like an interface that I mentioned to you before, it is more like air water interface, okay. But what happens is that the air water interface then changes into the droplet because of sloshing and sloshing what happens is that the interface then undergoes a break. So I was showing you even the ocean that the ocean waves and they move and when they move they break and then they break then they create the same kind of a thing. Okay. Those people who are aeronautical engineers, one of the problems that is of very big importance, although God forbid that nobody needs that, is that if the aeroplane has to land on the water, it is exactly the it is even worse than the sloshing phenomenon because the impact of that hitting the plane and how does it impact? It will have all over the place sloshing going on, little breakdown. You can do that problem today, okay, using ANSYS. And actually, if you want, we have written some papers in the past that I can share with you. And the method that we use, actually, there is other method that is used in this is. I do not know how many of you have heard is, is called the smooth particle hydrodynamic. Uh, anybody has heard of that? It is called SPH. So SPH is also a part of fluent and is very powerful. And so you have, you have uh, you know, if you have a volume of fluid method and you have all of these particles, little, little droplets going in, you, if you use the volume of fluid for all these droplets, you are going to be working forever. So then there are other methods that have come up like a smooth particle hydrodynamics, 
which basically deal with this kind of problem, including sloshing, much, much better. Okay. So now you will see here there are a lot of numbers, and I think that we are really going very slow. So ignore these numbers in our context that we have. But this is just for your information, Archimedes number, Atwood number, and you know the other numbers that are you see that you can always see Atwood number is liquid gas, liquid plus gas. So in some applications they are useful. But all the applications that we are dealing with, we are going to deal with only a few numbers. Okay, you will see tomorrow. In the context of bubbles, all right. So let me go over. Uh, but there is a bond number. It turns out that in the context of the bubbles, bond number is very important. What is a bond number? Gravity, the diameter of the bubble, the liquid phase, and the gas phase outside, and the surface tension. So the bond, uh, the bond number is important. This is not that important. The other one is very important is the capillary number. So capillary number is nothing but a viscous force just like the Reynolds number divided by the surface tension. So this is a very important number. So like you know when you uh, like a straw, you know if you are drinking a Coke, right, Coca Cola or whatever you know you drink, orange juice, so you have a little straw. So that is a capillary phenomena and that phenomena is entirely based on the surface tension. If the surface tension was not there, you can suck as much as you want the you will not be able to drink the orange juice okay so then you know, somebody may say you have to see the doctor right <laughs> you cannot suck it what i mean is that if that straw was not very small diameter you have a big straw a big big straw with a big diameter you will have to suck very very hard to get the water up so the point I'm making is the capillary number is very important in understanding the fluid mechanics, where the forces are such that the viscous forces time divided by the surface tension forces. This is important. So most of these numbers, just like Reynolds number, they are all basically define the ratio of two forces because they are all dimensionless. You cannot have a force some type of a force on the denominator and you can have it some different variable in the uh, numerator then it will not be a dimensionless number okay so you will find in a from fundamental point of view like this is a uh, this is a uh, ratio of the capillary forces to the gravitational forces so in the context that we are talking about bond number and capillary number you will find that we will be talking about a lot in next few days the other one, these you can ignore, okay. The CFL number, you can, all of you who do the calculations, you always come across. This is a numerical thing, it has nothing to do with the physics. Okay. I may talk about a little bit about this one, but not a whole lot in the presence of magnetic field. So, there is an interest in the presence of magnetic field of the bubbles, all right. So, that may be of interest. I think sometimes, you know, uh, there may be some indirect applications of that the people who work in the nuclear industry but you can just ignore it for the time being now atwas number and euler number somebody mentioned about euler number uh, i think that they are not that important so euler number is delta p over rho u square all right they are important but they are not really that critical and the four year number you know all these not that important proud number is important if you are a hydraulics person Okay, so if you are interested in uh, canals and you know open channels, etc., etc., the proud number becomes important. And in some applications, you know, uh, when you are dealing with the interface and you are trying to see the movement of some objects on the interface, it might become important. But it's still in the context of what we are going to talk about, I think I will not be dealing with that as much. But this is for your information. Then there is electric proud number, proud rate, Galileo number, Kreitz number, Jacob number for heat transfer, etc. You know, boiling number, there are a lot of numbers there. And this is not a complete list. You know, if you look at the total number of numbers, 
dimensionless numbers in fluid mechanics is about four times that I am going to be showing you. All right. So these are other numbers. These are important. Okay. So if you want to become famous, you know, come up with a number. And as I said, this is not a complete number. Now this is a little bit interesting in the context of heat transfer, and also in the context of the uh, uh, multiphase flow. And this is called the Kutate Lapse number. And this basically defined again. You can see the surface tension is there, and there is a density variation and effect of the gravitational forces to the surface tension forces. So this might come up, but normally we don't use it because it is related to other numbers. Okay, so you will find that actually they are overdefined of the numbers to make some people happy, but they are related to each other. The Laplace number again, you know, in, it is like in a, those who work in a capillary kind of flows, it may be of interest. But we are not going to worry about Lewis number, and you know there are other numbers there. So what are the numbers that I said important right now? Anybody remembers? The bond num bond number is very important. Capillary number is very important in most applications. One number I have not put it, which I should have, is called the cavitation number. And so when we do the cavitation and one person is interested in it, cavitation number is very important. Okay. So in our context for this course, we have to deal with the bond number because that is important for the bubbles. We will be dealing with the uh, uh, capillary number and then we will be dealing with the cavitation number. Now this is a very important number. It is a difficult to pronounce. It's called the one surge number. Okay, it is also re uh, related. But those those of you who are chemical engineer, I don't know how many of you are there. It is very important in the context of the bubbles and other problems. So you can see that it is a it is a, a ratio of the viscous forces divided by the inertia times the surface tension forces. The reason you have a square root is that you cannot have two times the forces, you know. So forces times the square cannot be so this is a right dimension. Now Peclet number you know is important, but Peclet number is similar to you know you can relate it to Reynolds number and also you can relate to the Prandtl number. So the basic numbers that I consider always in fluid mechanics is Reynolds number and Prandtl. But Mr. Peclet must have become happy after seeing this. There is similarly a Schmidt number which is very important because it deals with the mass transfer. And so, like heat transfer, the Reynolds number, no, the uh, uh, no, the uh, the uh, Prandtl number is most important. Similarly, for mass transfer, the Schmidt number is very important. Of course, we talked about the now those people who are interested in the phase change problems. Sometimes this phase change number becomes important. Now, Reynolds number we already talked about. And the Schmidt number, as I said, is important because it deals with the mass transfer. So, like you have a thermal diffusivity. Anybody knows the definition of thermal diffusivity? Right. So, similarly, it has the same thing here, which is a Schmidt number. Okay. Now, we are not going to worry about all this, but they are all related. If a number, a Stokes number, somebody mentioned, it is of interest for low speed flows, or when the particle is moving very, very slowly inside a fluidized bed. But they are not that critical. This is a very important number. It's called the Weber number. So the Weber number is the important number, and Weber number is related to the Reynolds number, the Atwas number, and also it is related to the Morton number that we talked about, Proud number. So it has a, a capillary number times the Reynolds number. Of course, you can relate it. But at a fundamental level in the literature, when you read it, you will find that Weber number is talked about a lot. And the Morton number is talked about a lot. And the Bond number is talked about a lot. Of course, the Reynolds number, Prandtl number, and the Schmidt number, these are talked about a great deal. And so if you only know about these numbers, that's enough from this whole list. You don't need to know more. 
all right and so the uh, so the reynolds number is a, these numbers are very important and we are now talking about only considering let us say a flow in a pipe which we will talk about later so this is a one example i am telling you is if you have a liquid film uh, surrounding a gas and there are two phases gas and liquid and the liquid film is near the near the uh, uh, pipe then there is a very famous paper by gi taylor who was a great fluid dynamicist of last century from england and there are a lot of things after his name there so not a one thing there are hundreds of things after his name so the taylor and the who were the three greatest fluid dynamicists of last century i mean everybody has a opinion but rantel taylor and von karman there is a general agreement around the world that those are the three greatest fluid dynamicists of the last century and so taylor there are a lot of things after his name actually okay there is a taylor number also and so this is a famous paper by him and this is a capillary number so what this does is that depending upon the size of the pipe okay and depending upon the flow velocity it turns out that all the empirical relations that are available for the experiment that was done by taylor in 1961 it has been repeated by tons and tons of people large number of people and then they try to show the correlation because it's an important problem and so the idea of next slide is to show you just simply those correlations it basically shows that a various number of people since my since taylor have done this correlations and this is the thickness of the film divided by the radius of the pipe and they all can be related in terms of only single uh, dimensionless number and that is the reynolds number uh, no the capillary number sorry so what i am saying is that the the dimensional numbers are extremely important so when we show you know what happens in a case of cavitation what happens in case of Uh, uh, the bubbles what happens in the case of the particle flow in combustion you can characterize the whole thing by uh, the dimensionless number so what is the most important thing that comes out of a dimensionless number what is the most important thing comes out is that you do the experiment there 65 people in this room and they do 65 experiment you can take all those 65 experiment and collapse all the data in terms of the dimensionless number so the idea here is that you take delta over r and come up with a expression that all the data by 65 people is a function of ca so that is why it is important so we talked about moody chart what is the beauty of moody chart is that the friction coefficient for a pipe can be entire experiments thousands of experiments for a pipe with a lot of say roughnesses and lot of reynolds numbers etc they can be plotted on a log log plot and get really very good answer so everybody's data from around the world has been collapsed into one single chart so that is why the dimensionless numbers are important so suppose you know i am doing an experiment on say the growth of a bubble in a pipe in time all right so the bubble is growing and eventually you know that it will deform because it is surrounded by liquid and so it is against the gravity forces is going to deform and so you have a little pipe and you have some velocity you have a big pipe and you have some velocity so much of diverse data how do you interpret it so if you use the dimensional analysis it turns out is a concept similar to similitude that you can collapse all of it into one single chart so that everybody's data is working now if somebody has taken a wrong data then also it shows that that particular data is not fitting on the chart okay so either this person has discovered new physics or he has done a wrong experiment okay 
and either option is not too bad because if it is a wrong experiment then at least it should be discarded if he has discovered a new physics then of course you have advanced the research a great deal okay so this is a great importance of all these information that we have okay so this basically concludes this particular presentation and then i'm going to go over the next one very quickly you know i mean this has been a slow one but i as i said you know having this interaction and having input from you and you are showing interest in the uh, in the work at least you know when you ask a question it seems to me that you have some interest in what i'm saying if you don't ask anything then i have a feeling that you are thinking about your brother or a sister or maybe you know your friend or about the movie next day or doing something you know you know or your children or whoever you know so what i'm saying is that and this is this is true you know that normal human is uh, attention is span even if you are listening to the greatest speaker okay and all these people you know who on sunday you know the whole channel is full in the morning of somebody or the other giving some sermon